How's it going everyone? The Trout91 here back for the Sasulo playthrough. This is episode number 23. If you missed the previous episode, you can check it out in the link down below in the description or you can check out the card in the top right hand corner. Just to give you the recap on what happened in the last episode, it was a great episode as far as I'm concerned because our first game came against Roma and you're probably sitting there thinking, oh, Roma are a good team. This could be a tough one, but we pulled out the victory. It was a 4-2 win in the end. Very convincing game for ourselves. We were very potent up front and we had a fairly solid defense. We did let a couple slip after a few mistakes, but it was a great performance overall. We also had a second game in the episode where we drew 0-0 against Atalanta, which wasn't too eventful and a game that we may have well been entitled to get three points from. Now, coming into this episode, our first game of the day is against Inter Milan. We had both Magnanelli and Ricci out injured as well as Nicholas Frey being suspended. Now, I was quite excited for this game. Off the back of the Roma matchup, I was thinking we could possibly nick some points here against these bigger teams, and it's time for us to start doing so if we really want to be contenders for the Serie A title in the next couple of years. However, we just weren't really up to the mark. Perisic opened up the game with the first goal after 12 minutes. Not long after, Peluso was the unfortunate victim of an own goal. Kandreva added a third in the second half. We also showed some fight back as Gary Hooper got his first goal in what was about 12 games or something, a ridiculously long run. We have been playing Danny Ings admittedly ahead of him, but it's been a while since we saw Big GH score a goal. And although it wasn't particularly a valuable goal in this context, it was still appreciated to know that he was still about lurking. Now the thought of the comeback was silenced as Edair added a fourth goal to make our afternoon just that little bit worse. So we lost 4-1 and off the back of that we were coming up into our second game against Chavo. Now our team was back to the way it usually looks. The only difference is Berardi would be starting in this game. I also swapped out Ante for Dima Chalis because I'm, I haven't been too happy with how the centre-back partnership has been going so far. I would have liked to have seen a few more clean sheets. I think we're just letting in silly goals we really shouldn't be in. I was hoping Di Matteo would provide a bit more structure at the back, but it hasn't really worked out that way. So I'm going to drop Ante into the centre-back position for this game. We started off strong as Gary Hooper suddenly sparked to life in the past two games, scoring in two games in a row now. He suddenly knows how to score goals, and I haven't seen him in this kind of form since the start of the series when we were actually finding Gary Hooper scoring on a regular basis. I think he went on like a four or five game run of scoring a goal. Now it's a short-lived lead as Pelsia leveled things up to one apiece. You wait ages for one and two come along at once as Gary Hooper bagged his second and his third to complete the hat-trick in the 62nd minute and the 66th. Now there was some fear that we might not walk away with three points in this one as Nicholas Frey had himself sent off. And then to make things a bit more squeaky and then to make things a bit more squeaky bum time, Meggy Aroni scored for Chavo. What kind of name is that, by the way? But to ensure the victory stayed in the Sassuolo camp, Emmanuel Emanike scored a goal well into injury time. A man who hasn't scored or featured too much since we picked up Danny Ings at the close of the January transfer window. But he is still lurking about and showing us he can still score goals. So it's nice to have all three of my strikers that I'm playing at the moment getting us goals from all sorts of games and positions. Now at this point in the series, we are just trailing Torino by one point and we were coming up against Cagliari, which hopefully should be three points for us. Now Nicholas Frey was suspended once again after his red card and I decided to put Di Michaelis back into the side considering my plans of taking him out and putting Ante in didn't quite work out as well as I thought they would in the last episode as we conceded two more goals. This is a tough game. We huffed, we puffed, but we just could not get the ball in the back of the net. And after hours of relentless attempts, big Gary Hooper scored for the third game in a row, scoring his 20th goal in total for the season to put us 1-0 up. We held on for the duration of the game and claimed all three points. Now, the best part of this was that Torino lost their match against Pescara. And with our win, we went two points clear of Torino, and we had seven points between us and Napoli, meaning that Europa League is looking very likely at this stage. But there's still quite a few games to go, and that could all change very quickly. Now, our fourth match of the episode was a tough one. We had to play against Juventus. And again, I was going into this thinking, OK, we didn't have the best time against Inter Milan. They're a very good side. We gave Juventus a great game last time round, and even in the Inter Milan game, we didn't actually have our full strength squad. 
I was thinking that we probably won't win this game. We're going to have to hope for a draw. And since we are away from home, I kind of want to make sure that we're controlling the midfield as much as possible. Because I felt like in some of those other games, especially against Juventus before, we weren't controlling the game. In my head, I was thinking I've got to put, I've got to overload the midfield. And I did just that. I tried a 4-5-1 formation. It was literally to see if we can control the ball a bit more and work it as a unit and as a team and hold on to it more than Juventus would dominate. Now the unfortunate thing is that meant bringing in Ragusa and Emmanuel Thomas into the left and right of midfield to replace Politano and Berardi, which isn't the ideal replacements, I know, but to make the formation work, we had to go with that. Now Morel had to also replace Peluso at left back for this game. I came into the game slightly optimistic and very quickly that optimism was silenced as Higuain scored within one minute of the game. Things got very much worse from then on. Duncan was red carded in the 21st minute. And then Mandzukic made sure that there was never going to be a chance of us getting anything from this game by scoring two goals in the 55th and the 70th minute. Oh Mandy. You came and you took and you gave nothing to me. Now I want to apologise for the fact that there's no live commentary in today's episode. It's a very busy week for me myself, so I'm having to whack through a couple of these episodes without live commentary just because it takes too much time and effort to edit in such a short amount of time that I actually have available this week. But nevertheless, I will get you the episodes out as promised for this week. They'll be out on the Tuesday, Thursday, and the Sunday. And Sunday will be the last episode of this current season. And then from there, we will either go to live streaming or we'll carry on season two as YouTube videos. But I'm thinking more than live streaming. And that's a question for you in the comments down below. Would you like to see me live stream this stuff more than I put YouTube videos up? Because there's a lot of detail that obviously I have to cut out of these episodes as far as tactics, decisions, and behind the scenes that you won't see because it could take up way too much time. Now, a lot of you are also going, Trout, where is the daily drink? Hashtag Trout's daily drink. Don't worry, I've got you boys covered. We've got a bit of OJ, bit of the orange juice. Get that vitamin C in. Mm, Tesco brand as well. You can rest easy at night and have a nice sleep knowing that you got your fix of Trout's daily drink. I'll try... I have to record these pretty much back to back to back, so I'm going to have to go and get another drink after this. I'm going to be like weeing all day. I'm going to go into the toilet in mid-game and like every couple of minutes anyway. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the video. Do drop a like rating if you did. If you haven't done, make sure you subscribe if you're new around here. And I'll see you for the next one.